think music plays a big part in my life. If my inner soul is, um, is like a garden, then music is really the road for me to connect with myself and to other people. My epiphany is feeling about music is it isn't just notes on a page. We've had a, a really exciting adventure into improvisation. So we've been exploring painting pictures in music. It's great to be able to, to play music, um, not just in a professional kind of way to see how music is, but also um, what music can do to people's life and how it can bring joy and bring hope into their life. In October 2018, several members of Epiphany flew into Hanoi Airport in Vietnam for a week-long collaboration with young Vietnamese pianist Trang Trinh. So I met Richard eight, nine years ago through a mutual friend. In the back of my mind, there has always been a, a wish, a dream that um, one day I could join with this team to make music. What we were aiming to achieve through this trip was to show how effective music can be in enriching people's lives anywhere in the world, regardless of the differences in culture and background. We wanted to take what we do in various settings around the UK and to bring that to communities in Vietnam, hoping that it would have a similar positive impact. For many of us, it was our first visit to Vietnam, and even the first time to Asia for some. So we took the first day to learn a bit about the culture and to get acclimatized to the vibrant life and busyness of the city. to put on a number of events alongside Trang Trinh, bringing music to local communities and also to give a bigger, more formal concert at the end of the week. So on the second day, we had our first rehearsal together. <laughs> Several months before coming to Vietnam, we had an idea of commissioning a piece by Epiphany composer Peter Richards specifically for this trip. I decided to base the piece around a very famous Vietnamese folk song entitled The Drifting Clouds. Most of the lyrics are about loss and longing and things like that, but uh, the title of the overall piece is Ka Tang Me Choi, which means seeing beyond the drifting clouds, so the idea is to encourage the listener to look beyond uh, into the unseen realm, the deep questions of life. Why are we here on earth and where do we come from and things like that. The first time that I heard the sample of Peter's piece, I actually cried because I could see from that a vision of, um, of a very, something very beautiful that can happen. It could be quite a lot of pedal, I think, yeah.
Trang runs an organisation called WANDA, which provides opportunities for young people to get involved in music making who may not otherwise get the chance. So on the third day of our trip, Trang organised a trip to a large school in Hanoi, where we performed a surprise concert to 3,000 young people. Right, ready and raring to go. Should we put the harp on the stage first? I think we're, we're doing a young people's concert here in this very interesting open air space. children don't know there's a concert on this morning, so they're all coming in looking really surprised. given these, I think Trang should have these. Later in the week, we enjoyed performing a concert in a nursery school where we played for some babies and toddlers. It was amazing to see how these children, who didn't know anything about us, the music or our language, responded with such enthusiasm and excitement. <laughs> Trang was keen that news of our concerts was advertised widely in Vietnam, so she and her team arranged a major press conference leading up to our main concert. This gave us the opportunity to explain more about our collaboration with Trang, as well as to give her the chance to talk about the amazing work she's doing with her husband for young people in Vietnam. Peter Richards was also able to talk about the piece he composed. Bringing that into after chatting to the press, we were able to play some sound portraits for individual members of the press. 
A sound portrait is basically where we use improvised music to paint a unique picture of the person sitting in front of us. In the same venue, there was a beautiful art exhibition on display, and we ended up playing an improvised musical response to one of the paintings, with the artist himself sitting in the middle of us. It went really well. It's always interesting trying to speak in another language and have it interpreted. But uh, yeah, the whole atmosphere of the place was amazing by the end, especially playing the sound portraits for various people and really enjoyed playing for that artist at the end. It's interesting that it works in this culture as well as it works in the UK where we've obviously played a lot. So it's been a really good morning, I think. One of Epiphany's greatest passions and callings is to bring music into the heart of communities, touching lives of people who may never get the opportunity to experience live music. We very much wanted this to be part of our trip to Vietnam, and the morning after the press conference, we were driven to a small enclosed housing estate to give a concert for the residents there. We managed to bring a grand piano into the courtyard and set up to give a concert on their doorsteps. We're doing a community concert, but it's in a space surrounded by really tiny houses and um, it's right in the middle of the community, so it's going to be a lot of fun and definitely a first for all of us. There were a couple of young people there who were studying the violin locally. They were actually pretty good players, and it was great to talk with them. Okay. Oh, you love you. Love you. Love you. I, 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 we're not so... We ended up inviting the young violins to come and play Paco Bell's Canon with us, which was a great experience for both us and them. This was definitely a highlight of the trip for us, bringing many people out of their homes and onto their doorsteps. Young people, young families and older people alike.
After the main concert, we played an improvised blessing for the whole community, and then some individual sound portraits for a number of local residents. to be able to be sort of in their homes really. Yeah. yeah, we're basically in their homes. And they've been so warm in welcoming us and letting us into their lives. I don't know whether you found it as moving as yeah. we did, but oh. there was something wonderful about playing for people where they live and mm. bringing something to them. It's not about being on a, on a stage mm. only and people being passive, but mm bringing it off the stage and coming amongst people. Uh, yes. And I know that's your heart as well. It's been something that I really dreamed of, you know, um, as a child, to just open my window and see some people playing music outside yeah. and for that community square in the middle of, I don't know how many households, um, to be filled with life and laughter and music and I think that came true this morning. I was very moved to see the, the elderly and, and the young yeah. um, all joining in together and the mother holding the baby dancing. Yeah, it's so wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's very moving for me yes. as, as, as a musician. Yes. I hope that everybody would have had an experience that they have, um, have never had before. And they've had a moment of realizing that there's more to what there is in front of their eyes. And I think that it is true. I think that they have experienced that. And I can see it from the tears in their eyes when they cry. Um, they must have been really deeply moved because in our culture, it is not so great to cry in public. So for somebody to cry or to shed tears in public is, is I guess, some, uh, a real proof that they have been very deeply moved. The culmination of our time in Vietnam was a sold-out concert at the amazing Hanoi Opera House. I'm here for the big concert tonight. Looking forward to it. Hanoi Opera House, that's sort of not what you expect in the middle of a city like this. Beautiful building, isn't it? So it's going to be great fun playing in here. Looking forward to it starting. Yes. Then we'll feel good. Thank you. 
There was something about playing that piece in particular. I think for many of us, we were really deeply moved. I hear that there's been so many amazing responses to that piece in particular. And all credit to Peter Richards, who's composed it, because he spent so many days working on bringing the two, uh, you know, kind of like the fusion of East and West together. Um, and it's, it's worked brilliantly, I think. So, there we go, we've done. Well done. <laughs> Not quite used to this massive public sp exposure. But... <laughs> it was just a really good experience, yeah. yeah. It's uh, just lovely to, to be us with all the, the people who live here in Vietnam and just to do a joint project, I think it's amazing. I might be wrong, but it possibly Peter's piece is one of the first piece ever that is written by a foreign composer using the um, folk tunes of Vietnam. Right. So for me, I find it very moving yeah. as a musician. Um, and I just think that most of the audience would have been very touched by the fact that you know the Vietnamese folk tune is now uh, given a new color. Yes. Uh, a colour that is um, from European roots and um, I think that, that brings some healing and that also shows the appreciation that, uh, that you and Peter have for, for the folk tunes and for mm. Vietnam and I think that is something that people really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do hope that there is many more opportunities to collaborate. Um, I hope that I can go to England as well to, to be um, on the other side of the world and to, to join in the other project that Epiphany is doing in. And I hope this piece uh, that Peter's written can be recorded. Um, it would be something that I would like to share with all of my future students and, and many other people, if possible. I think to bring the beauty of what she brings and who she is um, to our audiences in the UK, I think would be very special.